Morena, everyone, and welcome to Cobblestone's Chronicles. It's my pleasure to be with you here again today and to talk about cobblestones and things that are going on down there. And I'm also delighted to be able to welcome my guest, Jenny Toswell, who's the chair of the Friends of Cobblestones. And she's come in this morning to talk to you and me about all the different things that the Friends do. And it's they do such a wide range of things. It's fantastic. But before I introduce Jenny, I'll, I'd like to play you a song. So this morning, I've got a, a tune by a young uh, group called um, You, Me, Everybody, who are a group of young New Zealanders who play a kind of bluegrass music. And this track that I'm going to play you is called Devil in a Bottle of Whiskey. So it's quite a fun track. Here we go. How long it takes to find the devil in a bottle of whiskey. You can search all day and you can search all night But trouble is all you'll find Your sorrow won't drown, your wallet is empty And so is half of your glass But the devil don't mind that it's him you can't find Cause he's hiding in a bottle of whiskey the streets are dull, the sky is grey, working long hours all day. Your steps are short, your pace is slow, and so is the speed of your brain. Whiskey is fast, but you know it won't last, and your sorrow is calling you name. You drink till you cry and you see the devil smile Cause he's hiding in a bottle of whiskey but Do you know how long it takes to find the devil in a bottle of whiskey? You can search all day, you can search all night But trouble is all you'll find Your sorrow won't drown while it is empty, so is half of your glass. But the devil don't mind that it's him you can't find, cause he's hiding in a bottle of whiskey. Because of heartache and pain I'll catch that train right away But the trains they ain't leaving today I guess I'll walk the streets till the sun it dies And I'll drink, drink till my thoughts melt away But all I do is cry and see the devil smile Cause he's hiding in a bottle of whiskey Do you know how long it takes to find the devil in a bottle of whiskey? You can search all day, you can search all night But trouble is all you'll find But the devil don't mind that it's him you can't find Cause he's hiding in 
and a bottle of whiskey. That was The Devil Hiding in a Bottle of Whiskey by the You, Me, Everybody group um, who come from based around Hamilton and um, they're just absolutely delightful. I, I've known and been listening to them for some years now and they're um, very talented young people. So this morning it's my pleasure to welcome Jenny Toswell. And Jenny's been around the wire wrapper for a long time now. She's going to tell you a bit more about that. And she used to be a paramedic. Um, and she also is still um, working for victim support here, as well as being the chair of Cobblestones, Friends of Cobblestones, which is, um, she's a very busy lady. So thank you very much for coming in today, Jenny, to talk to us. And... Would you like to tell us a little bit about what Friends of Cobblestones do? Yes, certainly I would. Um, and uh, Good morning, Jeanette, and thank you for asking me to come along. The Friends is, is basically, it's a group of, um, we're all volunteers and we all love cobblestones. So what we do, we have um, meetings every two months, which are held on a, usually held on a Sunday and very often finish with a glass of wine. And we discuss our plans for what cobblestones might need, re really the grounds um, and the buildings, and also um, what events are coming up. So really we're sort of the workforce um, behind cobblestones keeping the grounds looking the way they are. We have a dedicated uh, band of volunteers who beaver away in the garden every spare moment they have, and then we have working bees when required just to keep the grounds looking like a park. And we're very proud of cobblestones. Um, somehow or another, it, I started off as just one of the gardeners, uh, volunteers, and suddenly I found myself as chair of the friends and I I love it and it really does get under your skin and you feel you're part of a very special place because Cobblestones is it's a historic village plus the museum of course but there's so many wonderful stories um, involved with the buildings and the all the horse-drawn vehicles etc etc that is uh, makes up Cobblestones. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Um, it's just, I know that you do a huge, the friends do a huge amount of work for Cobblestones, and I'm always amazed. I wish I had such good gardeners in my own garden. <laughs> and the, Because the gardeners are, are just great, and I've in the past bought a few plants from the gardeners, who I know grow a few extra plants, and they always do really well in my own garden. Um. I went to, uh, last week I went to a function at Cobblestones and um, the catering was just fabulous. Yeah, yes. I just think the um, ladies who do the catering do a great job. Do you want to tell us a bit more about I will. what they do? I will. Well, we, as uh, Jeanette has said, we have a wonderful band of caterers, men and women, who somehow or another just keep turning out this wonderful food. And um, as Jeanette has said, excuse me, um, we had a big function with the Great Aunt Trust Lands Trust celebrating 150 years last week. And the finger food and service that these volunteers provided was just quite superb. And we've had the most amazing comments from uh, the members of the Great Aunt Trust Lands Trust. Uh, we do <clears throat> a lot of private catering. In fact, I went to a function last night at a friend's um, 80th and they turned on the most beautiful food and somehow or another they, <clears throat> they never turned down any um, functions and they are our main source of income to keep uh, cobblestones up and running. And we have special projects coming up, which the Trust, which is the other arm of cobblestones, they often put to us um, a suggestion or proposal to see if we'd be able to help fund ongoing work, which, of course, with old buildings and uh, machinery, etc., etc., 
I'm afraid there's always m- money required, but uh, we have uh, we've had a lot of school visits, and of course with Christmas coming up, we have got our wonderful carol service, which is on the 17th of December. At gates opening at 4.30 and it's going to be a fabulous night so there's lots of things happening down there I think it's I think it's great that um, the friends do such a fantastic job of doing catering because it means that the money raised from the catering jobs is helping to support cobblestones. And I know they even do weddings down at cobblestones because, of course, we have our beautiful little church that takes 60 people very cosily, I have to say. <laughs> and and um, they often do finger food and drinks after the weddings in the grounds. And it, it always looks delightful. We were very involved with the Midwinter um, Festival in Greytown. We've done that for the last uh, couple of years when COVID has permitted it. And we've had um, five weekends uh, with various um, themes and functions through the, uh, the month of July. And once again, all the friends have risen to the occasion and um, they just... I just I can't thank them enough for the work that uh, goes on behind the scenes at Cobblestones. It really is fantastic because um, I was there for most of the midwinter um, festivals days, and it was so much fun, and it was just lovely to see kids running around doing things, having a great time. Didn't see very many devices being used, nope. <laughs> and and. Um, and what I did see was a lot of very patient parents <laughs> carrying around miniature sheep, peg dolls, <laughs> bits of knitting, and all kinds of um, project products from the activities. Yeah. And of course, the plant stall and the really? um, white elephant stall with lots and lots of treasures. <laughs> yes. They were a great success, and we we actually are having a plant stall at. Um, the uh, carol service as well because uh, rather nice Christmas presents um, hopefully will be available. Oh, that's a great idea for mm. last minute Christmas presents. Yes, yes. Fantastic. So if you've forgotten to buy a Christmas present for somebody right. on the 17th of December, there'll be a plant stall and plants yes. are normally very gratefully received. They are indeed, yes. Yep. I know I've got um, quite a few hydrangeas growing up nicely that I'm going to put on the plant stall right. for sale. Yep. So those right. are usually quite popular. They are. Mm. Um, I am. Um, um, it's always fun being in the garden and growing things on. It's, it's very satisfying. Isn't very it? satisfying. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play another song now. I thought I'd play a song called Antonio's Wigwam which is about a, a, a doctor who was down the South Island and he was probably the first black doctor in New Zealand. Um, he was um, Maori and he used a combination of Western type medicine and traditional medicine. So this is a song, Antonia's Wigwam it's called, and um, he had a, a little fare with a... a a grass roof, of course, and it was down near Invercargill, and I hope you enjoy it. It's sung by Chris Priestley, who's a great collector of traditional New Zealand music. Here we go, Antonia's Wigwam. <laughs> Dad was a hooker on the Thames gold field She was born in a covered cot Mum was a gypsy with a crystal ball And Lil had a gypsy's heart She could dance all night, could target Lil Her spirit was wild and free She'd read their palms when they passed their mugs And brewed that black belly tea and Now she's gone 
I remember her still The queen of the diggers camp up on Don Buck's Hill To win her heart They say a man could kill Oh, she made them sigh Cause the price was high Till the bottle ran dry Tiger Hill Moved with a graceful swing of the hips Her eyes were a thoughtful brown Dark as the night with a blue-black sheen Her long hair tumbled down A smile won many a lonely heart When friendly smiles were few Some say that a man had broken a heart But no one really knew And now she's gone I remember her still The queen of the diggers camp up on Don Buck's Hill To win her heart They say a man could kill All those riffraff guys with their moonstruck eyes Could only try to tie store for the diggers needs and understood them well if they quibbled at her prices and called her a fool she'd rage like a cat from hell her tongue would lash with a stock whip sting and her language was not nice the man who quibbled tried to put her down never did it twice and now she's gone I remember her still The queen of the diggers camp up on Don Buck's Hill To win her heart They say a man could kill All those riffraff guys with their moonstruck eyes Could only try to tiger them Oh, she made them sigh cause the price was high Bottle ran dry, Tiger Hill from Don Box Hill. So that was Chris Chris Priestley, and I'm sorry I played the wrong song. That was Tiger Lil. I'll play Antonio's Wigwam later. But before I do, um, I'll just have a final chat with Jenny. So I know that you, everybody's really looking forward to Carols at Cobblestones. There's so many people are just so excited about it. And because we can, we can do it definitely this year and not organise at the last minute. That's right. I have to say that I really admired the way the friends just pulled together last year and organised carols at Cobblestones at the last minute because they were determined that we wouldn't miss out. That's right, yes, because with having no um, Christmas parade, unfortunately, for the past two years, but hopefully in the future that we hope to see that um, remedied. But uh, we just felt that the children had had such a... A lacklustre and, um, and not a lot of fun stuff with the COVID um, lockdowns and we just decided that no we're going to go ahead with it and and it was wonderful and it's going to be just as good bigger and better maybe and we've got uh, a couple of uh, local groups from the Kirunui and college and um, the Blue School plus a wonderful group that are coming along to entertain us. Father Christmas will be there and his elves uh, he'll be arriving in some interesting um, 
uh, vehicle, so that's going to be a surprise for everybody. And as I say, there will be fabulous food by once again by our caterers, wonderful sausage sizzles, and as I've mentioned before, the plants. So every, you can bring along a picnic and a rug. The gates open at four thirty, and we would love to see as many people there as possible. And we'll just keep our fingers crossed that the weather gods shine upon us. Yep, just um, if you are going to come along to Carols at Cobblestones, keep your eye on our Facebook page on the day, um, just in case of really inclement weather. Oh, and I've got some exciting news too, that there is going to be a cash bar, so you'll be able to buy wine and beer at Carols at Cobblestones, as well as you can, of course, BYO, but... um, Remember that all the profit from the sales of food and beer and wine goes towards the upkeep of cobblestones. Absolutely, yeah. And as Jenny mentioned, we have a lot of old buildings at cobblestones. We have six heritage listed buildings. And believe me, they are not cheap to keep. No, they are not. (coughs) Um, poor Jenny is, has been struggling with uh, um, a throat and um, sinus infection for the last several weeks and she's still, she's still having a bit of a cough but please don't worry, it's not contagious. Nope. Especially over the, (laughs) it's not COVID, Um, especially over the airwaves. So you're quite safe. (laughs) You're quite safe. So um, I will play another song now. And um, and we'll say goodbye to Jenny while I'm seeing her out. You can listen to My Father's People, which is written, performed by Niels Gedge, who just happens to be my husband. <laughs> and part of his um, part of his group of ancestors did actually come from this area. They came from Mahara, which is a bit further north from Masterton. And um, they were, of course, Scandinavian and settled here in New Zealand. And um, they, they farmed up there. So I will just cue that up. And here we go for my father's people. All the swamps broken the falls by the old Tapo Road. We bailed in summer, fed out in winter, and fed the cars. Sundays down at the hall. Mrs. Mac played the sweet by and by And old Pop Finley was still waiting on the lawn To lift him up to his home To his home in the sky Time came, we moved to the city Packed a big truck Drove over the hill But deep down inside We were sons of the forest Guess in my heart I'm living there Still Mrs. Mac, hair in a bun Upright as her old piano Her daughter is living in Sydney. Last week, her grandson emailed from Rio. Barefoot days, the shadows now That walk so short 
in my high noon garden. But later today, I swear they did lengthen as the sun was setting west of Eden. There's a place I go. You can map it on Google. Place I go, you can't get there by car. Place I go, might find my brother. And the place I go, it's a place in my heart. Someday down at the home. Mrs. Mac played the sweet by and by And old Pop Finley was to wait on the lawn To lift him up to his home To his home in the sky To lift him up to his home in the sky My Father's People by Niels Gedge, um, lovely song comparing what happened in our early settler days with the way we live today, you know, and talking about the email and um, communicating. And I know that in the early settler days, um, when Greytown was settled and when Masterton was settled and Carterton was settled all in the second half of the 19th century people left wherever they were, their home country to come to New Zealand and they knew that often they wouldn't see their loved ones, their family again they wouldn't see their parents and they, wouldn't see, they often wouldn't see their brothers and sisters Unless sometimes the brothers and sisters, of course, came out to New Zealand. But it was a huge step. Whereas these days, we take, kind of take it for granted that we can be in touch with people. We can go and see them. We're, start, we're starting to travel again. We noticed at Cobblestones that there's quite a few international visitors coming through now. People are coming to visit New Zealand, which is, is great. It's lovely to see people. And um, um, we we have a homestay and, on our property in Great Ann. And um, I got an email the, the other day from someone in Scotland, who a Kiwi who's planning to come back to New Zealand for a month's holiday and is planning her trip already for December 2023. So it's really great that we can plan things, plan ahead now. Isn't it good? So it was lovely to have Jenny Toswell in here talking about the Friends of Cobblestones. And if you would be interested in joining the Friends of Cobblestones, and there's lots of things that you can do as a volunteer, um, we, apart from the catering team who do a fantastic job, the gardening team who do a fantastic job, even just helping out on our open days. Um, if you can knit or sew, we're always looking for demonstrators to show children the old-fashioned crafts. Um, we have a couple of really old sewing machines that um, somebody has done up and they work really well. And children are fascinated to see hand sewing machines. Um, and we also have the opportunity to make miniature sheep. If um, uh, that's something you'd like to do, we can give you full training on how to do that. It's not that tough. Um, but it's mostly about handling the wool and getting the kids to feel wool and to feel the lanolin that comes out of the wool. They absolutely love it. They're fascinated. And, of course, we always... Um, we're always looking for someone to use the blacksmith's forge because that's um, always really interesting. And if we could find somebody who would come in on a regular basis and use the forge, um, that would be really appreciated. Just contact us through our Facebook page. We also have a, a group who 
on Wednesday mornings are in the workshop and they are restoring some of our old carts and if you go and look past cobblestones you'll see three of the carts that they have restored and which are looking beautiful along the front entrance and at the moment they're building a stagecoach a pretend stagecoach so if that's something that you would like to be involved in if you have some woodworking skills or if you just want to learn get in touch with us through cobblestone's facebook page or through the website one or the other we'd love to hear from you or just phone cobblestones and say hey look i'm interested in doing something i'm interested in being a friend so and we'll take your phone number and we'll get in touch with you. I will take your um, email address and get in touch with you and um, have a chat with you to find out what you might like to do. And as we said, Carols at Cobblestones on December the 17th is going to be such fun um, with the Vicky Clayton Band singing all those old favourite Christmas carols. Uh, a group from Kurunui College, an all-girl band called Non-Applicable, who are going to be playing us some tunes. And, of course, the Blue School, who are going to come and open the proceedings with Wyatta. And they're always absolutely delightful. And Santa Claus, a visit from Santa. So come along, bring a picnic or buy the food at cobblestones and come and sit down and enjoy yourself on the grass at cobblestones gates open 4 30 on the 17th of december okay so i'm now going to play you the song that i promised some time ago and played the wrong song so i'm going to play you the story of antonio's wigwam here we go by Chris Priestley. Antonia's way. My father's people cleared a forest. refugee from Van Diemen's land But how we got there, no one knows For his features were Native American Coppery bronze, jet black hair and Flashing black eyes He arrived in Awaroa A prisoner on a whaling ship he Managed to escape And headed off into the bush Call in the black doctor No one really knew him well But call in the black doctor I'm sure he had a tale to tell He built his house on a slanting broadleaf tree On the banks of the Wahapai River And he believed one day world would turn upside down and those without proper attachment would drop off into space. And he lived with cats and dogs and birds and had a magnificent garden from which he would procure herbal remedies. And he called in the black doctor No one really knew him well Called him the black doctor I'm sure he had a tale to tell They say he was a trifle vain Would head into town A white bell topper Dark velvet coat And a gold tip cane And he made magnificent kites And the children would come out And follow him Just like the Pied Piper And in his garden was a huge swing on which he would disport himself, eyes closed, 
bittigen Tod. At the time, people squatted everywhere. By and by, the owner of the land appeared, and the doctor was evicted. He was moved into an ordinary house in town. He died soon after. So remember, we should look after the craftsmen, kite makers, black doctors, and musicians of this world. Called him the Black Doctor No one really knew well They called him the Black Doctor I'm sure he had a tale to tell Colin the Black Doctor, um, a traditional s story put to song and tuned by Chris Priestley. And um, he does a wonderful job of collecting the old stories and the old songs and recording them for posterity because we're still quite a young country and it's great to make sure that we keep all the songs and keep all the, um, the stories alive. And I hope that you're enjoying Cobblestone's Chronicles and I'd love to hear from you. So if you want to give me some feedback about what you would like to hear about more or some or whatever else you're interested in, please send me a message through Cobblestone's Facebook page. I look after our Facebook page so you will get to it will get to me and um, I'd be delighted to hear from you and chat with you it would be really good fun to hear more about what you're interested in so cobblestones has um, had a busy year and we yesterday we had a visit from a school Ponatahi Christian School and we had the five, six and seven year olds and they were absolutely delightful. We had a lot of fun dressing them up in um, kind of things that would have been worn in the 1870s by little kids. We had waistcoats for the boys and pinafers and mob caps for the girls and they, they, um, they had such a lot of fun doing a lot of different things being in the school and hearing about handwriting and lessons that the kids would have had in the 1870s and then um, they did a scavenger hunt so they went off to find the answer to various questions and <laughs> it was a great way of um, a great way of burning off some energy because they were having such a good time running around trying to find things. We also got the fire engine out and they all sat in the fire engine and discovered more about how the old fire engines worked and what they used to do. Our lovely fire engine was um, built in the 1950s in England and brought out and it's, um, it's in the museum. It's kept in the far station, which is actually an old building from Carterton. And the the fire engine was in service in Carterton throughout the 50s and 60s and I believe in well into the 70s uh, before it was replaced. And then Carterton Fire Brigade very kindly gave it to us. And um, they also went through the cottage and I was there dressed up in my costume, my Victorian style costume, which is a replica of a Victorian uh, lady's costume. And they were really interested to hear more about how life, what 
ordinary life was like for kids in the 1870s and 1880s and about how many people lived in our tiny cottage there and they all insisted on climbing up the stairs of course to have a look at the bedrooms and they had a, just a wonderful time we also have a lot of old-fashioned games that we laid out on the green so after they had lunch they they played with the old games we have hula hoops skittles and stilts which are always a lot of fun and i've got to say that the teachers were just delightful they were so calm collected the kids were running around creating chaos and the teachers just had them all in not in control but knew what they were doing and knew when to give them a bit of rope to run around. I think being a teacher is a fantastic job and they, the way the kids responded to them and the way they behaved, it was just delightful to see. So, and I talked a lot about when I was standing in the cottage in the kitchen about the kind of food that we had in the 1870s and 1880s into the 1890s because of course we ate a lot of mutton and lamb in New Zealand because we were growing the sheep for the wool shearing the sheep and then the wool got sent off but we had a lot of excess sheep so lamb and mutton was very often the dish of the day I'm going to play you a song now called Wild Mountain Stew, which is a little bit more exciting than mutton and lamb. Um, describes the way you make a wild mountain stew. And uh, this is by a friend of ours, Alan Downs, who is a um, fantastic singer-songwriter, was a farmer himself. He calls himself a recovering farmer. Um, he no longer farms, but he still lives in the Hawke's Bay. So here we go. Wild Mountains Drew by Alan Downs. Caught out again by the sun going down your day, still not complete. Dagging or drenching or shearing the strays, it's dark when you find the last sheep. Returning the use, cleaning the gear, your day never seems to be through. Feeding the dogs, you head on home for a drop of your favourite brew. You stoke up the fire, muddy the bass, relight the barbecue. Couple of spuds and some fresh garden greens and a bit of that wild mountain stew. Anything found wandering round the acres that belong to you. Little finesse and a handful of herbs, and if not cuisine, it's bloody good food. When you live on the land, a real country man makes a meal of what nature runs by you. Grow what you can, cook what you catch, it makes for adventurous dining. Wild mountain stew, famous home brew, and a garden that's brimming with greens. Couple of acres of agria potatoes, anything wild, roadkill or beguiled will do for a wild mountain stew. Pieces hot, second cuts in your socks, well greased jeans stand alone. You glance at the clock, which appears to have stopped remembering wild mountain stew. It's robust and it's pungent, sticks to your ribcage, gives you the will to do what you do. Looking back, it's good to remember the beer and the wild mountain stew. When you live on the land, a real country man makes a meal of what nature runs by you. Grow what you can. Cook what you catch, it makes for adventurous dining. Wild mountain stew, famous home brew, and a garden that's brimming with green. Couple of acres of agria potatoes. Anything wild, roadkill, or beguiled will do for a wild mountain stew. There's goats and there's geese, rabbit and hare, turkey, possum, and mallard. Pheasant, venison, or wild pig, anything without an earmark. All of it's good, with a long, slow cook. There's trouts and eels in the river and creek. When game gets a little passe, sometimes you come across the odd wild sheep. When you live on the land, a real country man makes a meal of what nature runs by you. 
Grow what you can, cook what you catch Makes for adventurous dining Wild mountain stew, famous home brew And a garden that's brimming with green A couple of acres of agri or potatoes Anything wild, roadkill or beguiled Will do for a wild mountain stew Alone once again as the sun's going down Your day's still not complete Dagging or dipping or shearing the stray It's dark when you find the last sheep Are you living to eat? Are you eating to live? Does it make any difference to you? You look in the fridge for that famous beverage Another day's just passing through When you live on the land A real country man makes a meal of what nature runs by you Grow what you can, cook what you catch It makes for adventurous dining Wild mountain stew, famous home brew And a garden that's brimming with green a Couple of acres of agri or potatoes Anything wild, road kill or beguiled Or the kid's pet lamb will do Wild Mountain Stew, what a description of a meal. I have to say that I'm quite pleased that Alan's never offered to cook Wild Mountain Stew for us. Um, I know he makes a very fine lasagna, but um, didn't ask what else was in it. I have to say, it tasted good. So um, I'm almost at the end of this today's programme. Um, Gosh, time goes very quickly when you are having fun. And I hope you enjoy hearing a bit about cobblestones. Um, next week, I'll be talking a little bit more about some of the stories behind cobblestones. And remember that if you want uh, to have more, have volunteer at cobblestones, we'd love to have you. There's lots of different things you can do, um, even running a radio program. So I'll just play you a final outro um, for a little piece of music by called Memory and Longing. It's uh, again by Niels Gedge and it's a lovely instrumental. So I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Memory and Longing by Niels Gage. Isn't it a lovely song? I think there's something about um, the land in New Zealand that gets to you and that has you want to be close to the land. Um, that's it almost for today. Um, just to remind you that Carols at Cobblestones is on the 17th of December. It is free entry, but we'd really appreciate a koha and any um, funds raised will go towards the development of the Red Sheds, which is a huge new development we're undertaking so that we can display our collection of machinery a bit more, a bit better and, and more extensively and so that people can have a look at the machinery, hopefully getting some of it working. So whatever you spend there, all the profit goes towards developing the, the sheds and keeping them, um, keeping them so that they will last for another hundred years or so and the machinery in them will last for another hundred and something years. So stay safe. Travel safe, and I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.